This video is sponsored by True Gold Republic, the precious metals experts. Talk to one of their experts today about diversifying your portfolio to help assure your future financial security. Find their contact information in the description below and pinned in our first comment. James Kaufman, World News Report today. April 18th, 2024. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, we've had three M-class solar flares earth-directed today, coming from a large group of sunspots that are directly earth-facing. To start with, right around 2.30 UTC time, we had a 2.2 M flare seen here. And then we moved on to about 8.30 UTC time. We saw a 1.2 M class solar flare right here. It says 1.29. And we had a slow day except for the C flare that popped off. Almost an M flare here, 9.77. And then we finally had a longer term M flare that lasted about an hour in M territory here. And they're saying it's two flares. And I'm going to show you why they're saying it's two flares in just one moment. So all three of those flares were actually produced by three separate sunspots. 3643, 3647, and 3638. However, all three sunspots are grouped very tightly together. Jumping over to spaceweatherlive.com, first thing I want you to notice is over on the left, we have a 75% chance of having an M-class solar flare. We also currently have a 20% chance of having an X-class solar flare, although I think that should be higher. The highest I've ever seen is 25%. Now we're running a C2 baseline, so, of course, we have a 99.99999% chance of a C flare. All right, let's get to work. Now, the first flare of the day, we can see here at 2.32 UTC time. Now, what time is that here in the U.S.? That's going to be at 9.32 last night. And that lasted for 21 minutes. It came from 3638. So remember that. You really won't have to. But notice, first off, it's not a complicated sunspot. It's green. So not being complex, it still produced an M2.2 solar flare. The sunspot AR3647 is more complex. Alpha, beta, gamma. The most complex sunspot would be red. It would be Alpha, Beta, Delta, Gamma, which we don't have right now. So, ladies and gentlemen, what do we have? Second, we have a M1.2 from AR3643. So we have 3638, 3643, and then we have two M1.5s from 3647. Now, this is what I want you all to notice. Starts at 1922, ends at 1212, but this one starts at 1212, and it actually lasts quite a long time, right at one hour to the moment. So they're saying it came from the same sunspot. This one started as the other ended, and the entire period is about one hour as a M-class solar flare. Now this is NASA's Isward. Goodard Spiral, and they have both those M1.5 flares inbound to hit Earth on the 22nd. They just modeled this this second. They have it as a direct hit, and I believe it should be. The sunspots were directly Earth-facing, as I will show you. All right, heading over to GOES, 16th Solar Ultraviolet Imager, 195 angstroms. This looks like one sunspot group, but we're going to discuss this as four or five separate sunspot groups. Now, you're going to see the double explosion, one, two perhaps, and they're saying that both of the 1.5 M-class solar flares came from AR3647. 
Now we can kind of see that here, but we're going to be able to see it a lot better on the X-ray absorption. Moving over to STO, HMI, and Tensogram, we see that we have a mess here. Uh, I believe, let's see, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 Earth-facing sunspots. We know it takes about 12 days for a sunspot group to transverse the Earth-facing side of our sun. And some of them are just about around the bend here, but 14 is a, a lot of sunspots. Although, I read that the record was 29 Earth-facing sunspots at one time. Now, this is where it gets strange, right? All of the solar flares, the first one, the 2.2, came from AR3638, right here. The second one, the M1.2, came from AR3643, right here. And then the two M flares... They say come out of 3647. And those are the ones that we just saw on the Iswas Goodard spiral uh, that were inbound towards Earth. It was a one two punch. So we're expecting again that on the 22nd, maybe a little sooner. Now remember, all of the M flares, including the 2.2 that came out of 3638, were all directly Earth facing. I question why they've separated 3645 and 3647. They look like they're merging to me. We're going to have to see what happens there if they do. This is a close-up view of that mess there. 3636 has been kind of quiet, hey? And, well, we will take a look at it on HMI magnetogram and really get a good feel for what's going on. All right, over to our D-Region Absorption Prediction Center. Telling us what's hitting that lowest level of the atmosphere. Well, what's going on is that double 1.5 M flare. Let's watch it go off. You see the first flare there. We're going to see it fade slightly. Then we're going to see it actually flare again there. Two 1.5 solar flares right on top of one another from the same sunspot group. AR3647. Let's watch that again. Pretty easy to see. One, fade, two, fade. This went on for an hour. Radiation pouring down on the U.S. and all the Pacific. Now, Lasco almost seems like a waste of time to me. They show plasma moving up towards the north here. And at the end here, that looks like a hit on the camera. You'll see that there's another explosion, but... It's going off to the right. And all the explosions that we know about should be halo explosions if they created a CME, which in fact they did. And, well, we don't see anything that looks like a halo explosion from any of the four M flares that were actually popped off our sun today. Now we're going to make them look silly as usual. Uh... They thought we were going to have a G1 geomagnetic storm for about three hours. And that was going to be from, it looks like, 1 to 4 central time here this afternoon. It didn't occur. It would have been 1 to 4 central time. Nothing occurred. Not only did they predict it here, but on the Space Weather Prediction Center, they predicted it to happen on the 17th as well, UTC time. Well, folks, it's already the 18th. We're an hour into the 18th UTC time. You can say they were looking for about 35 to 40 centimeters cubed of plasma in a fairly long-term event. Some of them talked cannibal CME. We saw nothing on its way. And, well, let's take a look and see if anything hit, shall we? Taking a look at the KP indexes, all of them, Boulder, Fredericksburg, Smith Planetary College. Does it look like anything hit us? Solar winds or plasma? No, nothing at all hit us. Remember, this was unpredicted here. This is getting to be laughable. Now, I would say at this time, we do have a, an inbound CME or two, and I would expect those probably before the 22nd. Four days is an 
awful long way away. This is today's situation. You can see that there was no plasma impact whatsoever. Actually, plasma went down under one centimeter cubed. And this is all the way into tomorrow, as you can see. Zero hundred UTC time is here. Nothing occurred. Maybe they, well, jumped the gun a bit. We have some really weird solar wind activity here from 327 up to 417. So about a quarter million miles an hour stronger. Then back down to 336, back up to 414, another quarter million miles an hour-ish. Then we jump back down to 329, right back up to 420. So again, uh, jumping up and down a quarter million miles an hour. And it does it several times, as you can see here. 339, 422, quarter million miles an hour. What's really scary about this is the plasma is moving with the solar winds here, and so is the temperature. These confirm that whatever is happening here is not a data glitch. It's something really going on here. Probably some sort of other source of energy that has flown by. Not hard to explain why it goes up and down. And it's, well, clarified by the solar winds here and even the plasma, which should not be following solar winds, but is. All right, let's remember we're supposed to be in space weather all day. Well, you can see, folks, there is no space weather all day. Pretty sad situation here. I mean doesn't get any calmer when they say there's going to be a solar storm there isn't one when they don't predict a solar storm there is one i am confused over to sto hmi magnetogram it looks ugly remember white should always be over black positive over negative in the northern hemisphere but we're not seeing that on any of the sunspots coming around the limb although they seem to be reversing as they become earth facing this is that mess of sunspots that we've been dealing with that includes all of the sunspot groups that produced the four M flares today. That's AR3643, AR3647, and AR3638. All right there together in this big mess that I would guess should be one sunspot group. All right. All right, finally over to Soho 284 angstroms. We have 3639 up here, which has been very kind to us. And then this sunspot group, we're going to go ahead and look at a polarity chart on this and see if we can see why they're calling this five different sunspots. But this is the area where AR3643, AR3647, and AR3638 produced the four M flares that we had today. So, taking a quick look, this is the most dangerous area, probably 3638 or 3647, but each red dot they're counting is a sunspot group. And I somewhat agree with them. It's definitely separated over here. This, on the other hand, well, we do have two areas of negative polarity here in blue and several areas of positive polarity here in red. So this could be multiple sunspots. I guess it's a matter of opinion. You ask what's next? Well, we're going to be dealing with these sunspots, and there's plenty of them to deal with for the next 10 days, and we have a few more coming around the limb. Uh, 058 should probably be named by the morning, and, well, we have several others coming around. 056 here, 061, and 062. So, it doesn't look anywhere near as bad as what's Earth-facing currently. We might get a break if we can make it through, well, this rotation. And as discussed all week, uh, when our moon gets behind us, we have a pretty good lineup with Mercury, the Sun, and Jupiter and Uranus, and Saturn and Neptune on the other side of the Sun. We should expect Earthquake and volcanic activity, although we've already seen an uptick in both currently. 
With that said, God bless each and every one of you guys. Please share, please subscribe. Always remember, anything's possible. Bizarro world.